Hi guys, Big Dave here again. This will be the first of four slideshows that I'm going to show you in this class. You'll have to, a little assignment to write out a few paragraphs for me after you watch this. So what I'm going to try to do is start in the west and move east in the United States. As I do that, I'm going to start in the south and then go north, kind of south, north, south, north, and make my way across the uh, United States. Then I'll come back and go west to east across Canada. So I've been lucky enough to visit about 40 states and about seven or eight Canadian provinces. So let's start out west. Um, I'm in Hawaii right here. This is the North Shore of Oahu. Some pretty good waves coming in. Uh, this is one of my favorite spots. Makes my top five. One of my G spots. That's geography spots for you guys, all right? And so I have a lot of these geography spots. Um, this is on the island of Kauai, Kokei State Park. You drive up through the uh, Grand Canyon of the Pacific to get to this spot. I'm on the big island here. I've been lucky enough to go there um, three times to see the lava flows. This time I was able to get this close to it. That stuff's probably about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It was solidifying. It was called the Pohoi Hoi Lava Flow. This is on the island of Maui. I took the road to Hana. This is near the seven sacred pools. You can go swim in the waterfalls there. Beautiful spot. Come ashore, Southern California. Look at the great smog, San Fernando Valley, of course. Okay, this is, of course, the great freeway system of Southern California. Y'all have probably been stuck on these freeways like I have before. Uh, that's me on the right. When he's hanging out in Venice Beach, have my wig on. That's my buddy Uncle Sam right there. So I was lucky enough to house it a few summers with, for a friend down in Venice Beach. Got to see all the freaks like this guy who would jump into uh, broken glass with bare feet for money. Uh, actually, that's me right there back in the day in the center, Jackson, all oiled down with the suntan. This is Old Muscle Beach right here. Uh, there's a newer facility now. Okay, heading north now uh, out of Cambria, Cambria, towards Monterey. That's the Big Sur Highway. As you begin on the Big Sur Highway, you can stop near Hearst Castle, see the Elephant Seals, and they've been doing really well lately. Lots of them out there. Okay. Get past Monterey now. This is San Francisco from Twin Peaks. Uh, wonderful city to visit. For me, it'd be hard to live there. It's a little too crowded together for me, but really fun to visit. This is the corner of Haight-Ashbury, the old hippie district. Lots of freaks down there, lots of cool shops and everything else. Fun to go hang out there. Girardelli Square. This guy was playing music. It was so bad, I was taking money back from him. This is Yosemite on a great day. This is uh, Glacier Point. Um, if you haven't visited Yosemite, you've got to do this, right? Um, do it on a nice uh, spring day, uh, a weekday. Um, hike to the top of Half Dome if you got the energy. That was one of the hardest hikes that I have ever done. Took me, took me all day. It was 18 miles. I'm up on Tioga Pass. This is where you leave Yosemite Valley and you head over towards um, Mono Lake. And um, God, it's beautiful up there. It's just one of the geography spots for me. This is Olmstead Point, and if you look behind me on this slide, you see Yosemite Valley from the north end. South Lake Tahoe, I could live there. You know, you could ski, snowboard in the winter, go out on the lake in the summertime, lots of shows. I'm in, further north, I'm in Oregon, South Central Oregon, this is Crater Lake. 4860 BC, the whole top of this mountain blew off in a gigantic eruption, 42 times as violent as the Mount St. Helens eruption of 1980. So in the middle, you have another volcano growing. It's called Wizard Island. This is the Columbia River, right there between Oregon and Washington, along the coast, a major river of the Pacific Northwest. Okay, this is the Columbia Plateau. This is eastern Oregon, eastern Washington, where there's overlapping lava flows. Uh, this thin running lava, like you have in Hawaii, came out over millions of years and spread out right, layer after layer to the point where it's 2,500 to 3,000 feet thick. I didn't uh, take this slide, almost all the slides you'll see in my slideshows I took myself. This one I purchased, this is Mount St. Helens when it blew in 1980. Okay, this is the city of Seattle, great air quality because it rains so much. I think of grunge, I think of Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Starbucks, the timber industry, Boeing, when I think of uh, Seattle. Okay, for many summers I got to go up on cruise ships. I get to go for free. I would do lectures and take somebody with me. First cruise ship I ever lectured on, a small one, an older one, but they looked so much better than not floating boxes. They looked like, like real ships. So one of the stops on the cruise ships to Alaska is always Ketchikan. Ketchikan you can only get to by 
air or by sea. A great town to visit. Okay, this is the, the Sawyer Glacier. This is out of, I believe it's Juneau, Alaska. So a cruise ship would come in here into what's called a fjord, and I'd have a couple thousand people on the deck, and I'd tell them about the glaciers, I'd tell them about the history of Alaska. Great, if you get a chance, you've got to go up there. It's the old folks cruise though. All right, there's your daddy right there. Uh, my big fanny is in four states. Can you guys name them? I wonder. Anyways, I'm in between the uh, Sierra Nevada and the Rocky Mountains. It's called the Intermontane Basins and Plateaus of the United States. I'm going to start in the south and go north now, if you can picture where I am. Okay, I'm near Tucson, Arizona, right? And those are called saguaro cacti. Further north is the uh, Phoenix Metropolitan Area with three or four million people. Jackson and I are having to go there for baseball because baseball, this is during the corona time right now. It's been shut down in California, but Arizona was open for a... Uh, Baseball, but lots of cities jammed together. Phoenix, Scottsdale, Tempe, Glendale, Surprise, Chandler. So lots of cities, three or four million people. Okay, go north. This is one of my G spots, one of the most beautiful geography spots on the planet. This is uh, Sedona, Sedona, Arizona. Lots of retirees, lots of um, new age people, lots of outdoor enthusiasts. Um, my brother passed away recently, lived in Sedona, so I got to go up there a lot. I just recently spread his ashes right in this spot. He'd be so happy being right there. Okay, this is northern Arizona, the Navajo Indian Reservation. Uh, it's called Monument Valley. The Navajo will take you out on Jeep tours. Just a beautiful spot. Las Vegas, I try to go once or twice a year. I, I'm not a gambler, but I do love the shows. Just world-class entertainment. I've seen all kinds of great entertainers there. From Santana to Lady Gaga to The Beatles Love, all kinds of great shows. This is the Grand Canyon, okay? This is north of Flagstaff in Arizona, Colorado River cutting down, while the Colorado Plateau, which is in this general area, has been uprising, going up, uplifting over the last 15 to 20 million years. That canyon, in some spots, is 18 miles wide and a mile deep. This is one of the best vacations I ever went on in my life. It was a river raft trip through the Grand Canyon. Uh, you guys would love this. It's expansive, though, but when you're down there, you forget about the world after a while. I'm in New Mexico now. This is Santa Fe. Real artsy, fartsy, cool architecture. Great place. Go north of Santa Fe is Taos. This is an example of uh, Pueblo style architecture. Great place also. Uh, I'm in southern Utah. There are five national parks in Utah. This is one of them. This is called Bryce. And Bryce's sister park is called Zion. Maybe some of you guys have been there. If not, got to go. Go further north, you get up near Canyonlands. National Park. This is the north entrance. This is called Dead Horse Point. This is the Colorado River cutting down through sedimentary layers. Just beautiful spot. Okay, this is the Great Salt Lake, which you know is in Utah also. And I'm not Mormon, but I visited um, the Mormon Temple there and got a tour. It was very interesting. Uh, this is in Colorado. This is Mesa Verde, example of Anastasi uh, cliff dwellings, dating back to probably around 1200 um, AD. This is Idaho, this is the Snake River. So they take a lot of that water out of the snake. That's Shoshone Falls, by the way, and they irrigate, they grow lots of potatoes. A lot of open space in Nevada, Utah, Idaho, the Intermontane area, the grazing of animals. Ah, gosh, we're in the Tetons area now, we're in Wyoming. This is one of my favorite bars right here. You walk in there and you saddle up. They have saddles for bar stools. You'll see a nice big grizzly bear stuffed inside there. But you go outside of Jackson Hole, and the Grand Tetons are located here. Grand Tetons are absolutely gorgeous. I got the hike up into the Tetons. Um, this is the home of the rich and the famous, Jackson Hole, because of this gorgeous scenery. Okay, I'm in the Rockies now. This is, I'm at Mini Glacier Lodge. So um, the Rockies stretch all the way from Mexico up into Alaska. So now I'm in Yellowstone. Yellowstone is in Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. There's a hot spot. There is um, volcanic igneous activity below, below Yellowstone. This is a, a hot pool right here. And also there are geysers. This is the most famous geyser in the world possibly. This is um, Old Faithful, which goes off about every hour and a half. Uh, this is Lake Yellowstone uh, in May when the ice was breaking up. Just so beautiful. Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Uh, the Indians of the area would call it Yellowstone because of the sulfur tint. 
in the rock right here. And the buffalo, these are huge creatures. And every year it seems like you hear about tourists, you know, from different parts of the world trying to take their picture with the buffalo, which is not, not a great idea at all. Okay, now I'm between the Appalachians and the Rocky Mountains. The Great Plains, Interior Plains region. I'm going to start way in the south. That's the mighty Mississippi. This is one of my favorite cities in the world, New Orleans. When you go to New Orleans, I hope you get to go to the French Quarter. The French Quarter is a really fun place. So a lot of street entertainers. These guys are playing some Dixieland. That cardboard box is just full of money. This place doesn't look like much, but this is the Preservation Hall. You want to go here for sure. Um, if, if you like uh, alcoholic drinks, uh, you get a hurricane, and a lot of people do. You grab a hurricane out on the street, and you go inside the preservation hall, or grab a soda pop, whatever works for you. And inside here, you're going to have these old-time Dixieland jazzers getting after it. It'll be hot and muggy probably when you go, and these guys just get after it. Uh, this is hurricane area. Uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, not a lot of mountains flat, so you have to worry about the hurricane evacuation routes. If you ever heard the song Born on a Bayou by Creedence Clearwater, this is what a bayou looks like. They call them swamps too. Lots of gators down there. Out of New Orleans, you take the old river road. There's lots of old restored plantation homes. This one's called Oak Alley right here. Beautiful oak trees. I'm standing on the bank of the Mississippi River taking this shot right here. Uh, lots of sugar cane. In the, uh, in the area around New Orleans, in Louisiana, along the Gulf Coast. And a lot of houses are up on stilts because the river floods occasionally. This is the Missouri River, which joins the Mississippi near St. Louis. So let's go upstream on the Missouri River. This is Great Falls, an area where Lewis and Clark explored. They had to portage around these Cascades or Falls right here. That means take their, their boat out of the water and carry it around. Okay, now I am in, this is probably South Dakota, typical of what it might look like, land extensive farms. Uh, this is probably Wyoming, where my family is from. Uh, this is definitely Wyoming, uh, Dance with Wolves country right here, there are beautiful clouds. You probably know I'm at Mount Rushmore, this is South Dakota. Can you name those presidents going, going left to right? Uh, there's George, right? Uh, George, uh, George Washington. Who would be next? That'd be Thomas Jefferson, and it looks like Teddy right there, Teddy Roosevelt, and then there's good old what? Abraham Lincoln. Okay, great spot to visit. This is North Dakota, where they uh, surface mine coal. That crane is gigantic, like three stories high. Uh, I am in, this is Iowa. I'm in the Corn Belt right now of our country, Illinois and Iowa, those areas. Wisconsin, which is the old Dairy Belt, now you probably call the Central Valley of California, the nation's Dairy Belt. Uh, this is Detroit on a nice day. I'm in Windsor in Canada looking across at Detroit. Detroit known for automobile production still, the big three automobile makers. Uh, this is Lake Michigan. I'm driving through uh, Chicago right here, fun city to visit also. I'm in the Appalachians now. I was able to hike part of the Appalachia uh, Trail. The Appalachians go from Alabama all the way up into Canada. And this is what it looks like in the Appalachians. Different than the, we the, the mountains in the western United States. They're smaller. The highest peak in the Appalachians is only 6,000 feet. So more like rolling hills for us. This is in Virginia, what the Appalachians look like. This is kind of the Shenandoah Valley area. So this is, here we go. So this is some architecture in Vermont. Okay, this is uh, New Hampshire. I drove the back roads, got these. Uh, not a great slide, somebody gave this to me. I've never been off teaching in the fall to go see the changing of the leaves. Coast of Maine. And this is my favorite East Coast town, big one. Uh, the town of Boston, Charles River. But there's one thing I really hate about Boston, and that would be the old Boston Garden. The Boston freaking Celtics. I still can't stand them to this day. A uh, great way to see Boston is on the T. It goes underground and above. There's my beautiful wife, Maria, when we were in Beacon Hill in Boston, an upscale area. And there's chairs. There's my bar right there. I walked in, everybody said, Dave. Uh, there's a former COS student right there, one of my best students ever, went on to Harvard Medical School. So we visited him there and toured the campus. Uh, this is Bunker Hill. This is where there's a lot of Revolutionary War history. 
There's the USS Constitution. I think it's the oldest uh, ship in the U.S. Navy. Went on a tour of that. And then I rented a cab and went to Boston. Use my credit card. And I went to try to find Plymouth Rock. Now I want to see the rack. And so I'm walking around and I saw the replica of the Mayflower. I couldn't find this rock. And it's down in this hole. Plymouth Rock is this tiny little pebble compared to like Morro Rock at Square National Park or Morro Rock at Morro Bay. I think it's about four feet big. And I said, I traveled through three hours of traffic from Boston to see this pebble. And then I was running out of money when I was in New York this time, and I couldn't afford to go to the Statue of Liberty, so I took the Staten Island Ferry for 50 cents, and that's how close I got. So um, I was with my son Jackson, and he got to play um, in Cooperstown in a baseball tournament, and we went on a tour of the Hall of Fame. It was great. So I'm in uh, New York. I'm on top of the Empire State Building right now. So I'm in Manhattan, surrounded by the Hudson and the East River. So not a blade of grass in Manhattan, an amazing area. So when I went, it was about 30 bucks to go to the top of the Empire State Building. Now again, it's the tallest building, I believe, in Manhattan since the uh, Twin Towers went down. Uh, now when you travel the East Coast, you gotta pay money. You know, there's toll roads, turnpikes everywhere. So I'm in Pennsylvania right here on the back roads, just taking a look, and when you're in Pennsylvania, you know, you find a little honey like that, right? You gotta go, well, Hershey's a great place, by the way. The, the, the street lights are made out of, you know, look like Hershey's Kisses and all that stuff. But, now don't laugh here, but uh, this is the name of the town, and it's not what you think. This is a very famous uh, tourist destination. It's about an, an intercourse between like two different racetrack, horse racetracks or something like that. But um, this is Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, where uh, the Amish are, are located. So you'll be barreling down the street and these guys will turn out in front of you and they may have put turn signals on their, on their buggies and brake lights. But as you drive around, you'll see uh, the ladies um, pushing lawnmowers, just push lawnmowers, you know, hair pulled back, no makeup, and the men have the beards and the suspenders. Very interesting for you to visit someday. So I'm on the East Coast, obviously. This is the Potomac River, something called the Fall Line. It's a boundary between two physiographic areas where there's little cascades or waterfalls. And so if you haven't been to D.C., this is something that you should probably uh, go see for sure. First time I was there was during the Reagan administration. It looked more like this. They were protesting all kinds of things. And you can't walk out there anymore, right, where all those people are. They, they blocked that off. Capitol Building is a beautiful building in the Pennsylvania Boulevard. And then there's the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial with old Abe sitting inside. And off to the right, you'll see the Vietnam War Memorial, which is very, very, um, I don't know the right word to use here, but um, everybody's like really quiet. You look at 59,000 names of young people that died in, in that war on the wall. Smithsonian's are scattered throughout DC. They're fantastic museums to go visit. Um, this is Georgetown. One of the, the nice parts of uh, D.C. A lot of our nation's capital is pretty rough. This is Anacostia. I went here at 6 a.m. in the morning, kind of fearful for my life. So a lot of your nation's capital is, is pretty ghetto. Okay, this is across the border of Virginia. This is Mount Vernon, where this is George Washington's plantation. I have gone further south. I'm in the northern part of Florida right now. A lot of citrus production. There's my older son, uh, Dylan. He's now 20. And we went on a father-son trip to uh, the Disney World. And so we have the Matterhorn out here on the West Coast. They have Everest, which is probably a little better ride than the Matterhorn. And this is Boca Raton, Florida. I could be okay living in Florida, I think. Beautiful area. This is Miami. Nice area. There's my son Dylan when he was, what do you think he is? About 10, missing that front tooth. We went out on an airboat through the, uh, through the Everglades, Everglades National Park, kind of what the Everglades look like. We went through the mangrove swamps of the 10,000 islands, pretty neat also. And there's one of my buddies, there are so many gators in Florida now. And you come up, tickle his chin like that, and we're gonna feed him a little raw chicken, something like that. All right, that's a manatee. I had never seen a manatee before until I went to Florida, this big giant sea slug. I think it's like 12 feet long. Okay, I'm down in the Florida Keys. Really fun, down into the Caribbean area. They had a good reggae band down there at this hotel. Okay, to Canada now, I'm crossing the border. This is pre-9-11. Not very well protected border between the United States and Canada. It's changed a lot, but let's start out west. 
So, well, the first thing when I got to Canada, the first time I was in a rock and roll band, uh, I was touring. And we were all 19 years old, 18, 19, 20, and we were dumb as plywood. And we get up and they go, wow, Canada's cool, 100 miles an hour, step on it. You know, that, that's kilometers, right? There was about 62 miles an hour. And, you know, they got these big gang problems in Canada. This is the beer gang. Yeah, yeah, more beer. All right, so I'm out west now. This is Victoria, the Empress Hotel. I took a group from the College of the Sequoias, a group of seniors, actually, and we stayed. We stayed at this hotel, too. It's a fantastic spot. This is... Um, Vancouver, where the cruise ships take off from. Vancouver's a pretty nice town also. So this is the, uh, the Fraser River, Fraser Valley. It's still in British Columbia, but I've come inland now. And, ah, uh, God, this is this is beautiful spot right here. Uh, this is in the province of um, Alberta, and it's right across the border from, uh, from Glacier National Park, the Canadian side. It is just gorgeous there. All right, I don't know how that got in here, Jackson, but there you are uh, in, uh, in Cooperstown again. Keep going, we've got to change that. All right, I don't know. Did you put that in on purpose, Jackson, just to mess with me? Yeah. My technical director right there. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I'm in Banff, and it looks like Switzerland. This is a beautiful, beautiful spot right here. All right, go ahead. Now, you know, when I lived in Three Rivers up in the mountains, I had fallen a deer in my yard. Look at this. We got, we got a, what's that? Elk in the backyard right there, pretty amazing. All right, these all oh, beautiful hotels up in Canada. There's the Bamp Springs Hotel. Ah, uh, man, this is the uh, the Ten Peaks area. Just incredible. Look at the scenery. This is in Alberta. This is Lake Louise. It's one of my G spots. It makes a top five for me in the world. One of my geography spots. Scenically beautiful. It's a glacier up there in the hill. Ice just breaking up. This is June. Let me show you what it looks like in August. Look at that lake. So we stayed at that hotel, and you can hike around the lake and hike up to the uh, glacier. Um, I also took students up on the Columbia Glacier right here. There's a bus with huge tires that can take you up the side of this, and we walked on this Athabasca Glacier. Okay, a lot of petroleum production. The Athabasca tar sands are up in Alberta. So Canada is a major oil exporter. Okay, this is what the prairie provinces look like. This is like... Um, this would be like Eastern Alberta, Saskatchewan, uh, Manitoba, those parts of Canada. This is Saskatchewan, those are called grain elevators, so they grow a lot of wheat in Saskatchewan. Okay, I'm getting, this is what the housing looks like on the prairies, their version of the Great Plains, an older house. This is like a, a newer house, and it looks small, but they have big basements that they fix up you know, for rec rooms and extra places. So this was a friend I knew up in Canada. This was his house. And then it got down to minus 60, like minus 40, minus 60. It's just brutally cold. So they go out and skidoo. That's, that's jet ski or they'll ice fish, have a little hut. They'll put a warmer in there and drill a hole with an auger into the, into the ice. Um, this is Ontario. 225,000 lakes in the province of Ontario. But some of the housing, what it looks like. Uh, now this is the Canadian side in Ontario. This is uh, Niagara Falls. Isn't that beautiful? So we were up there, went to Toronto Blue Jays game. They played the Boston Red Sox, and we went to Niagara Falls. We saw it on both sides of the, of the border. Um, Thunder Bay, Ontario, typical housing. Uh, a lot of metallic mineral production on the north side of Lake Superior. And that is Lake Superior, Canadian side. Again, Lake Superior, gigantic lake. It took me forever to drive around it. And a lot of clear cutting of timber in Ontario. And you guys know what the, the capital of, of Canada actually is? Um, it is Ottawa. Beautiful city on the Ottawa River. That's the Parliament building. Okay, and there we are again. Jackson, we gotta fix that. Oh, great shots though of Niagara Falls. Gorgeous, huh? Okay, now we are in uh, the province of Quebec. All right. A lot of uh, French-speaking Canadians there, for sure. And this is the St. Lawrence River, which goes into Quebec. And I think we'll end it right there. That's enough slides for you guys for you guys to watch. So do your assignment. Turn it in as a Word document for me, okay? Thanks.